All right, next up we have Todd Hansen, and he's gonna tell us the story of how he developed an impossible catalytic converter. Thank you. Uh, good evening here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Uh-oh, we're a little bit far ahead. Well, okay, I'll jump ahead. Uh, what is a catalytic converter? A catalytic converter treats your emissions in your vehicle, um, and now maybe even a boat. It reduces the harmful organic compounds, reduces your NOx, and it also reduces your carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide, of course, is a very uh, serious uh, potential health risk, especially in the marine industry. And it is something that currently, there are roughly 49 pending lawsuits in the country, um, all related to teak surfing and kids passing away at the transom of the vessel. Um, well, I helped develop a technology while studying at the University of Washington and formed a company around an idea that I had and uh, built a team. And uh, I'm realizing here that we are not moving forward. <laughs> Developed a technology while studying at the University of Washington, came up with a concept, spent about a year and a half playing around with the original drawings of it before I actually made the first prototype with our second founding member, and we actually have three of them involved. Um, and there we go. So we started from the question mark. What and how do we solve this problem? How do we solve the problem in the marine industry? You're looking at roughly 11% of the total um, global emissions are coming from the marine industry itself. Of course, a lot of that is from shipping, but a lot of that also comes from your typical pleasure boats, your outboards, your, your oil-consuming two-stroke engines, um, all of those things play into, play into that part. Well, the team. So. Okay, great, we've got a product, now what are we gonna do? Well, we need to be able to market it, we need to be able to produce it, and we need to be able to continue to develop it. Develop it for other applications, for um, looking at different sizing, working with different engineering models. And of course, here again, we have the catalytic converter core, <laughs> and uh, basically, well, I can go into more detail here. So each one of those cells inside is coated with precious metals, very expensive ones, um, platinum, palladium, and, and uh, rhodium. They, are, they help reduce the overall pollutants, of course. And here we have our design. It has a water cooling system. It has this very unique exhaust gas recirculation component that helps reduce back pressure, improve performance, reduce noise, and overall engine performance. Um, tonight, we're going to focus again here on the marine. Marine side of it. That's where this whole thing started. With well, the curiosity to see if we can make a marine engine a little bit more fuel efficient. Well, originally, the idea was just to put an oxygen sensor in the exhaust system so we could monitor um, fuel flow and main, make sure that the engine didn't run too fuel rich or too lean, but maintain its performance. Um, so what have we done? We've played with all kinds of different marine engines. One of them is a great example is an 800 horsepower gasoline powered uh, or gasoline fueled monster motor. Were we able to make it clean? Yeah. Can you smell the fumes out of the back of it? No. Uh, we reduce all those emissions. Um, and yes, the technology is patented. We received our patent. Um, what was it? End of 2010. Um, so cleaner, quieter, cooler, safer, better, a little bit more fuel efficient. It's nice. You don't have quite as much noise. You also don't have those noxious fumes in the back. You're not going to have to worry about Sally in the back on the, on the uh, swim step um, getting sick from monoxide poisoning. What can we do? Well, the gray bars represent where everything starts. Very dirty. That green, those green slivers represent what our technology can do. And we can reduce up to 99% of the total emissions on marine vessels, automotive applications, again, even with this crazy cooling system. And this is a uh, part of the development process, of course, right here illustrated, is the CARB validation procedure. And that is a very lengthy, very time-consuming, very nerve-wracking process. You have to have certified CARB engineers working with you, and they're measuring everything that you can possibly imagine. Um, your temperatures, exhaust gas concentrations, mid-bed temperatures of a catalyst, very exciting things. Um, so what's, what really is involved? Again, we're looking at the development, overall emissions targets that we want to meet, performance, durability, and then developing and having a final product from all of these. So um, all those steps we had to go through in proving this thing out. Uh, okay, so development of products. So you start with something that's, that can be very expensive to manufacture and prototyping. Then you move forward into trying to figure out, okay, well, who's going to buy this thing if it costs four or $5,000? Well, 
nobody. So we need to come up with um, we need to come up with a solution that everybody is interested in. And sure, we can ask a little bit more beyond what is currently you know, price and scale. It's a better product. And so we institute technologies like CAD programming and and use development software, computer software. Well, okay, so that's all part of this too. And now you're also looking at engine management system, looking at overall durability, and looking at your actual readings. How are we performing? How are the changes affecting the actual performance of the system, the engine, and getting ready for this CARB five mode test cycle. And not only the emissions engineers are concerned about this, but the engine developers are as well, as I will explain here um, in a few more slides to come. Um, so, okay, so here's this crazy wild chart that we have to fill, fill out and work with. Um, you have to meet all kinds of different um, standards for emissions outputs, and your hydrocarbons, your NOx, your carbon monoxide, all of these different, different um, operational points in the vessel or on the automotive application. It doesn't matter what it is. And you have all these not to exceed limitations, of course, too, where you can't go outside of the bounds. Well, what do you end up with if you pass all that? Well, you end up with one of these circles. And hopefully it's the one on the bottom, the five stars, because that means that you really did a good job. Um, and fortunately enough, we were successful in being able to prove that we can do that. Um, so now the final engine test. Is the engine survivable with this thing? Well. We ran that 800 horsepower engine at 6,000 RPM at full thrust for six minutes straight on the dyno. What did we break? We broke the dyno. So, well, we proved the durability of the engine, but the dyno at the end of it needed a lot of work. Uh, we had 3,000 gallons of water that was pouring down. We had light fixtures falling in the fuel room. Yes, the light bulbs were on when they fell. Uh, very exciting. And uh, in the end of all that, we end up with a product, a product that you know, we can take to market, install in a vessel, and and uh, move forward with. Well, right now we're moving, getting ready to move that product forward. We've, we're just entering the commercialization phase of where we're at, so kind of an exciting step to be. Um, more aspects to this thing. Well, okay, what else can we do with it? Well, we can play with electronics and utilize electronic technologies that are available in the marketplace now and further enhance the product. So now we can make sure that the engine operates at its proper chemical ratios so that the catalyst itself can remain effective at all times, no matter what's happening, uh, whatever the driver's doing, basically, under all conditions. Um, and where are we going with this? Again, we've talked about automotive, we've talked about aircraft, and of, of course, continuing to move forward with the marine industry, not just small vessels, but large vessels as well, like our ferries that take us to Seattle every day. Um, and the exciting part is, you know, passion for me is what fueled the start of this thing, and getting ready to build a system that we're going to put on an aircraft. And it's going to be our first, or actually the first, catalyst-based uh, system to be used. So now we have to deal with leaded fuels and a few other issues around that durability. Of course, it's an airplane. You don't want it to come back down unexpectedly, so, or have to come back down unexpectedly. So we've got plenty of things that we're working on on that front. But um, regardless, thanks again for giving me the opportunity to present and share a little bit about uh, something I've been involved with. Thank you.